I'm going to talk to you about how do you scale a product and stuff like that. So most importantly, today is a story about the fact that uh, you know most often your product you create products and uh, it's okay that the products don't scale. So don't worry about uh, the product scaling in the beginning uh, of your product journey. So it's okay to create products that don't scale, that uh, uh, poor user experience and stuff like that. But what's important is get the product out and keep on iterating on that. Uh, so it's perfectly okay to create products that don't scale. So it so happened uh, with the founders of Airbnb that initially when they created their products and solutions they used to have a large number of people who used to come and drop into their accommodations, their lounges, their homestays and apartments and so on. So the numbers were like uh, growing by leaps and bounds. Uh, so the, when they just change uh, in the journey they were taking uh, photo shoots of the apartments and then uh, they got they followed that let us use some professional photographers to shoot the locations and once those pictures were uploaded they found a huge surge in uh, the whole application and tens of thousands of people started using it and then uh, they ran into a scalability issue so they were stuck their engineers could not create a produce, uh, solution product or solution that was scalable at first uh, and they were just stuck uh, uh, trying to make it better and not finding a way to do things. So that's when uh, their uh, uh, angel investors and uh, one of the founders got into a meeting and they said it's okay to create a product that does not scale, let us at least get the concept right. Uh, so they ensured that whatever is needed to get everything right was done and then post which uh, they, they put a uh, R&D activity around how to make things scalable and so on. Uh, so in fact uh, they were at one point of time struggling with the infinite scroll of the images on their uh, app, uh, application and on the website portal where the, the displays uh, homes of beautiful condos and uh, duplay apartments and things like that. So they were not able to find an infinitely scrolling uh, JavaScript or something like that which could help them show infinite number of images and uh, not have any latency when they are displaying them uh, all in real time with a good user experience. So their engineers actually did a lot of brainstorming, uh, they put their thoughts together and uh, indigenously as they say necessity is the mother of invention so they actually ended up creating uh, something called infinite.js and which they have open sourced it to the world. Uh, so it is totally okay to create products that do not scale. So don't be worried about that. And uh, recently I was just watching a video uh, of, uh, I was watching a talk from Marty uh, Kagan of the Silicon Valley uh, product group. Uh, so he has a nice concept on how uh, things should be in an agile project. So people are most often okay with the fact that okay we create an MVP or an MBA uh, or a potentially shippable increment we are doing great on the agile journey uh, so which talks about uh, the fact that are you creating value are you creating usability feasibility and viability so these things are the ones that are done when we get to an MVP or uh, a potentially shippable increment so but what we are ignoring totally is the fact that whatever product that you ship Working software need not guarantee customer success or customer delight or create that wow experience. So are you heading towards doing that? So that's more important. So are you really creating products that wow the customers by going that extra mile, understanding their pain points and do they really scale essentially? So it might be okay for 10,000 users, but then 50,000 users get on your platform. Uh, is everybody getting the same kind of experience that you envisage when you architected the product or solution? So apparently this has two churns. So you need to take care of reliability, scalability, performance, maintainability and high availability and those kind of non-functional requirements are also key. So uh, the talk which uh, Marty Kagan gave, uh, I say there's an interesting concept. He says one churn is the discovery chair wherein you're trying to get to your MVP or a solution that is viable, usable, has got good feasibility and is 
uh, makes business sense to make that product. The other one is whether this product actually will scale, perform well, have a good user experience, maintainability, reliability. So there are two churns. One he calls it as the uh, disk, uh, discovery phase the other is the delivery phase so those two need to go hand in hand in an agile project and uh, most often this is an ignored fact by the agile teams that okay as long as we've created a system it works and is out of my machine it's okay but uh, you, if you really need to have a great user experience you need to take over take care of the non-functional requirements and the end-to-end -end, uh, uh, product fitment product market fit as they call it uh, so creating a product is different and product market fit is different. So how does it uh, appeal to your customers, uh, market segments, how does it really uh, plonk in on that uh, segment, how, does people, how do people use it and derive value out of it. So all of these things uh, need to be addressed when you do stuff. Uh, so it's perfectly okay to create things that don't scale. Uh, give yourself the permission that it's okay if they don't scale in the beginning but work hard on it to make it scale eventually by putting your thoughts together, taking help wherever required. Uh, so that's totally okay. But uh, always remember there are two sides to it. One is the discovery part of it. We're trying to work on the concept itself. And once the concept is work gone, working to a prototype, you also need to take up the, the, of the non-functional requirements like high availability, scalability, maintainability, performance and user experience. And so these are the two churns that need to go hand in hand. People only look at the first one and ignore the uh, second. So if you do that, then you may not be able to create uh, that great product or solution. So you need to really pay hit to this one. And uh, so there is a famous uh, <coughs> sentence from the famous uh, statement that Y Combinator, which is uh, an incubator that helps a lot of startups uh, to incubate and go to fruition and market and all that. So they have a phrase, it says, build product, it's okay to build products that don't scale, but um, eventually, uh, so the first phase, you build products uh, that do not scale to build products that really scale. So that should be your philosophy, build products that do not scale to build products that really scale. So this is quite a good uh, uh, product development philosophy uh, or product management philosophy that you need to have uh, in your journeys uh, to turn your organization's uh, product or solution around. And uh, keep this in mind uh, when you are actually uh, doing stuff. So typically the discovery phase uh, has multiple iterations that you can play around with and see that you are actually creating uh, the right product out there. And uh, the delivery phase could be less paced, maybe one or two iterations a week uh, till you get it right. And uh, so both these churns need to go hand in hand. And this is an interesting concept uh, that I could, uh, uh, I got uh, from Bharti Kagan's talk um, uh, at the Silicon Valley product group uh, meetups. So I think uh, uh, you need to create uh, great products, keeping uh, these two uh, angles into effect and uh, always be shipping uh, uh, so that you have the cadence and uh, elicited good uh, customer feedback. So it's totally okay to create stuff that doesn't scale initially but work towards making it uh, scalable. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So this is one of those uh, uh, stories from the turn it around uh, stuff where we bring uh, stories that will help you turn uh, your IT product or solution around.